There's a beautiful analogy between black holes and waterfalls, which actually lets us calculate all properties of black holes exactly. When you approach a waterfall, the river flows faster and faster. When you approach a black hole, it's not the water that flows faster, it's space itself. The structure of a black hole is similar to the relentless flow of water over a waterfall. It's an analogy that follows the water from the river above to the rocks below and allows us to journey into the very heart of a black hole. If you're swimming upstream from a waterfall, there is this invisible line where the water flows as fast as you can swim. And if you cross that line, it's the point of no return. You wouldn't feel anything special, but no matter how hard you struggle, you can never escape getting sucked all the way down. For a black hole, the point of no return is called the event horizon. Past it, space is traveling inwards faster than the speed of light. Even if I can only swim at a maximum speed, the water can obviously fall much faster than that. And in the same way, even though I can never go faster than the speed of light through space, space itself is allowed in a black hole to fall as fast as it wants, which means that everything that's there, even a particle of light trying to go upward, will be sucked indirectly downward towards the center. Assuming your body withstood the intense gravity, leaving the universe forever could be remarkably uneventful. People used to think that you would die at the event horizon, but we now understand that for big black holes, it's perfectly possible to still be alive at this stage. You just have no choice but to continue downward. Everything would feel just normal to you. You wouldn't even know necessarily that you're, that you're doomed. The only thing is that there's no way you can ever get out again. As you approach the center of the black hole, you reach the inner horizon, where everything falling in meets matter being pushed out by the hole's rotation, similar to where the torrent flowing over the falls hits water rebounding back up. Eventually, the inward flow actually slows down to become slower than the speed of light because the rotation of the black hole causes a sort of repulsion. And at that point, you have things colliding together near the speed of light, creating these in ridiculously high temperatures, much hotter than inside of a star. So hot that it would vaporize me and any ordinary matter. So that makes an ordinary traffic accident seem really tame in comparison. Now you're being hit by a truck you know, going almost 300,000 kilometers per second. It's not a place where I would want to be. The inner horizon is one of the most extreme environments in the universe. According to general relativity, the only place more extreme is what lies beyond it. Well, let me gather, let me gather my thoughts here for a moment. remarkably difficult for us to actually calculate with Einstein's equations what happens inside the inner horizon. But if I jumped into a black hole, that's probably as far down as I would get. At the center of a black hole, the equations predict something so strange, it blows Einstein's greatest achievement out of the water and forces us to question our understanding of the universe.